guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first video, hi, I'm Elena, and this is The Organized Money, where we talk about planning life and managing money. Today's video is going to be a review on atomic habits. I'm going to be talking about five things that I learned from this book and how I plan on applying those things to help me build better habits with my planner. Now, let me start off by saying this. I have read a couple of books on habits habits and how to build habits and how to be more productive and this was one of the best books that I have ever read on the topic. I highly 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 recommend this one. We are going to get into some things that I learned from it but there is so much more than the things that we're talking about today. So let's go ahead and get started. The first lesson that I learned from this book is get 1% better every single single day. So the book is talking about the art of continuous improvement, not to be so focused on the goal and actually be focused on your continuous improvement. And continuous improvement is a dedication to making small changes and improvements every single day with the expectation that those small improvements will add up to something significant down the line. I really agree with the statement to try and get a little bit better every single day. Anytime I have a really big goal that I go after, if I try and take it all in, I usually get very overwhelmed. However, if I make small little changes, little things that I do every single day, then I am more likely going to stick with the habit. So I plan on applying this one to my faith planner. I was having a major issue with not using my faith planner on a consistent basis. And it's mainly because it was out of sight, out of mind. So the first thing that I did was add it back into my system, my Franken-planned system. So it's actually in my planner. And now that I do that, I just make it a system of mine to make sure that I'm opening up my faith planner every single day. And now that I have this streak going of always opening up my faith planner, always opening up my Bible app, I don't want to lose it. So it has become a part of my system to open up my faith planner every day, which causes me to study God's word more often. Lesson number two is to focus more on systems instead of goals. I love this one because usually when we're talking about something that we want to achieve in life, we are talking about the goal. We are talking about the thing that we want to attain. But the thing about setting goals is that it may give you momentum during that moment, but usually it doesn't last. So I experienced this personally a couple of months ago before COVID happened, I was working out and I had lost over 30 pounds. The thing is, is that once COVID hit and the goal was already achieved, I had already achieved my goal weight, then I kind of fell off all of the things that I was doing in order to achieve that goal and I gained about 10 pounds back. And instead of going back to what I was doing before, just focusing in on the goal, I decided to revamp my entire system. I made it a point to make sure that I am focusing on working out every day and managing what I am eating. So I added a health planner back into my system in order to monitor every single thing that I am doing. This will allow me to focus on the system and not just the goal of losing weight, but the overall system that it takes for me to work out, eat better, and make sure that I am taking care of myself. Lesson number three is identity, changing your inner who. Now, this was not a concept that I had heard before, but once I heard it, it made absolute perfect sense to me. And that is, change is hard. It can be really, really tough to stick to new behaviors, but you have to focus in on changing your identity first. How you see yourself is how you will actually apply the different things you are doing in your life. So the book talks about building identity-based habits. And I was trying to think about how I could possibly do this and I realized that I already do it in other areas. So currently I identify myself as someone who is productive, someone who is organized, someone who is very well planned. And I realized that because I identify myself that way, then my behaviors automatically reflect 
how I identify myself. So the goal here is to automatically decide how you want to identify yourself and then reflect the behaviors of that particular person. So here you want to identify the behaviors that you want and then consciously decide before you actually complete a behavior if it is a part of your identity. Would an organized person do this? Would a productive person do that? And then if they would or would not, you definitely have your answer. Lesson number four, small routines impact your life. Small actions can make really big changes. This book made me realize how much my routines matter. So I've always had a morning routine and an evening routine. However, if I missed any parts of my routine, I usually was really nonchalant about it. I was just always be like, oh well, I'll do it tomorrow. But this book made me realize how much my routines matter and how I need to be very intentional on making sure that I am completing my routines on a consistent basis. For example, he talked about in the book, if you start walking for 30 minutes every day, you won't be in shape immediately, but after a while, your body and your health will start to improve. So initially, you may not see the change, but compound it over time, you will start to see a change in your life. And that's how small routines can really impact your overall life. So I have a section in my planner for my trackers. When I was in my big planner, I had my morning routines and my evening routines also in this section. I had not had a chance to transfer it over, but this book definitely showed me that I need to make sure that I'm transferring it over and that I need to keep track of how much I am actually completing my routines on a consistent basis. Another routine that I want to keep track of is making sure that I am checking each one of my planners on a consistent basis. Each planner that I have is associated with an area of my life that I wanna make sure that I'm staying on top of. I have a very small routine of checking every single one of my planners in order to make sure that I'm staying on top of that section of my life. Adding each one of my planners to the very top of my catch-all planner is a routine that I started last week that I want to keep going because it ultimately impacts how much I am actually getting done in each one of these planners. Lesson number five, measure your progress. This was another lesson that was very profound to me because we often measure our progress by looking forward. We always set goals. I know I always set goals and achievements and pinpoints of different things that I want to do. And in planning these milestones, we're usually trying to predict the future. However, when it comes to building good habits and breaking bad habits, one of our greatest struggles is maintaining awareness of what we're actually doing. He talks about in the book how the more automatic a behavior becomes, the less likely we are to notice it. And this is how we can gain weight slowly without even realizing it because it's a consequence of eating poorly and not working out. But usually it kind of sneaks up on us and by the time we realize it, we're already 10 pounds heavier. However, backwards measuring can call attention to these invisible patterns because they make you aware of what you're actually doing. And since measuring backwards forces you to take notice of your recent actions, you'll be more likely to change them. So I'm doing this across the board in all of my planners, but the main one where this one really, really fits me is in my health planner because in that planner, I am keeping track of my workouts, how many calories I've burned, my current weight, and also keeping track of everything that I'm eating. And since I am measuring my progress, then I can look back at the previous week and then I can see how bad I have eaten or how well I have done and make sure that I either change the habit or keep it going. Another area where I am doing this is in my wellness planner. 
I'm keeping track of my daily spending in this planner and it really helps me kind of zone in on how much I'm spending in a day and making sure that I'm not going over my particular budget. So then I know if we spend too much in one week, we may go on a no spend the very next week or I just may have to adjust our budget to make sure that we are staying on top of how much spending we are doing. So those are my five big takeaways from the book Atomic Habits. This was an amazing book. If you are interested in getting this book, then make sure that you check out the description box. I will have the link to it. It goes straight to Amazon and you can pick it up. Promise you it's a great read. Until next time guys, keep organizing your life so that you can achieve your dreams. Bye guys.